Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and this is the first new BlackBerry I've gotten to use for any length of time in years. The BlackBerry Classic packs an eight megapixel shooter capable of producing 1080p video at 30 frames per second. So let's see how well this puppy performs with our real world tests. Oh, winter in Southern California is a many splendid thing. Checking out some flower shots in bright sunlight, we instantly walk into some exposure issues. Almost all phone cameras overexpose in my opinion, even in direct sunlight, but the Classic takes this to an almost destroyed level. I'm losing detail and color info in this pink flower, and we almost completely wash out individual petals on this white flower. Reds are problematic on most phones, and we see the same tendency to oversaturate. Throughout all of my tests, while this is shooting 1080p video, it's some of the dullest video I've seen come out of a phone in this price range. Details are not very crisp, and colors feel muted. Dynamic range is fairly poor, and I would like to see more contrast in many of these shots. Greens and purples don't seem to fare much better, as the whole image just looks a bit foggy, and there aren't any controls that I could find to influence the video exposure, contrast, or saturation. It's about as point and shoot as you can get. Checking out the camera zoom, there seems to be almost no pixel resampling here as we might find on Illumia. Essentially, we're enlarging the 2 megapixel HD image, which is incredibly destructive to fine detail. It's not a feature I would recommend using much, if at all. The macro story isn't really any better. The focusing system is slow, and the minimum focusing distance is pretty far from the main lens. The Classic also occasionally reports your subject is in focus when it's actually focused on something in the background. On a larger screen device, misfocus might be easier to notice, but the Classic's square screen with letterboxing layout for the camera app makes it really difficult to monitor what's happening with your composition. Add to the fact you can't pre-focus your video, and the beginning of every video you shoot will be the camera trying to lock focus on your subject. Into a walking test, only a few phones handle this kind of movement well, and the Classic is not one of them. In fact, I'd position this phone near the bottom of the list as it has some of the worst shape and rolling shutter issues I've ever seen on a modern smartphone camera. Trying as hard as I can to stabilize the phone, every single shot in this review has a jittery or jello-y wobble I find aesthetically unpleasant. This might be a byproduct of the software image stabilization, but that seems to be making the final video output worse, not better. Into a street scene as cars are driving past, the autofocus is doing a reasonably good job of staying put and not getting confused by objects traveling in front of the lens. Movement is tracking fairly well, but the overall scene still feels dull. For a beautifully sunny day in LA, the sky is a bit washed out and highlights are clipping on brightly colored cars. Fine detail is blurry in car grills, street signs, and tree leaves. Likely an artifact of saving only a 16 megabit per second compressed video file. And while the audio is normally really good on a Blackberry, there isn't any wind filtering I can find. That audio issue is slightly exacerbated moving to our freeway scene. While the mics on the Classic are really high quality, the wind noise degrades our ability to pick out individual cars in tire noise. Even though I'm really trying with both hands to hold the phone as steady as possible, this scene just keeps wobbling around. It's very disappointing. Into an exposure test moving from dark to bright and back, the Classic actually manages to scooch up to mid-pack performance here with some decent transitions between shadow and sunlight. The focusing system is confused by this turnaround, and the white balance changes noticeably, but exposure changes are even just a touch smoother than a Windows phone at this price point might be. Ugh, that rolling shutter wobble though, yikes. A quick note on depth of field, you won't get any background blur on this BlackBerry until you're working at macro distances, which as we mentioned before, is already tricky to land focus when working close. The bokeh isn't particularly pleasant, and there's still plenty of detail in the background to distract the eye away from your subject. Into a nighttime street scene, the combo of poor dynamic range and a tendency to overexpose rears its ugly head here again. Detail in the sign and in cars lit by headlights is blurry and washed out, trying to create a bright image here even with all the street lights to aid, creates a noisy, grainy mess as the ISO is climbing higher than it really needs to. That noise just continues to get worse when we remove some light from the situation. Our creepy tunnel scene is buzzing with high ISO noise on an image which should look a little darker. Even though we don't drop out of 30 frame per second video, I'd still like to see a lower ISO here and a faster shutter speed as headlights in the background are starting to streak. Now, I lean against a wall to stabilize every creepy gate 
sweet shot in every review I shoot, and it doesn't seem to matter here as tiny hand movements are dancing the image around. Again, in ultra low light conditions, the camera is trying to create a brighter scene than it really needs to. The white balance here is also looking for true white and doing a remarkably good job of adjusting the image, though I tend to prefer cameras that try to recreate the actual color of the scene, and this gate is lit by a pretty gross yellow security light. Lastly, our walkway test, blurry and noisy. There's a slight color separation between the slightly more yellow bulb on the left and the wider bulb on the right, but overexposure is washing out some of the color difference. So where's that leave us with the classic? Blackberries have never really been known for their camera prowess. The classic is one of the least fun phones I've used yet to shoot a camera review test on, tied with the Kyocera Brigadier for some of the most disappointing photo and video output I've seen out of a modern day smartphone. And just so you folks don't think I'm unfairly picking on the classic for its mid-range $420 off contract price, check out some of my other cheap phone reviews. Where this BlackBerry camera is handily outperformed by the LG G3 Vigor at around a $350 price point, and the Classic is also bested by the Lumia 1320, which used to sell for around $200 on Cricut. While I absolutely love BlackBerry build quality and the focus on business grade communication, they still don't seem to have figured out that phones are becoming our primary content creation devices too. The Classic has a camera you can use if you absolutely need to, but at this price point, it's a somewhat terrible option. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my reviews with your family, friends, and on social media. So keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.